Hi everyone, in this video we're gonna go over how to get patients into your dental office. For those of you who don't know me yet, hello, my name is Dawson. I own a dental marketing company here in Colorado Springs. I'm really excited to share some of the information that I have today. So get out a pen, a pad, and get ready to, to learn. I'm gonna peel back the curtain on some of the strategies that I use for my clients, how I get results for them. So be prepared to, again, take notes, uh, leave any comments of suggestions of videos you wanna see in the future. Uh, feel free to like this video, consider subscribing, and let's jump right into it. I want this video to be fun and engaging, kind of like how your parents hid uh, vegetables in some of the food that you were eating uh, when you were growing up. I want this to be a little bit of both so that not only are you entertained, but you also walk away with what's important. So I wanna wrap our first point into a story, a story that uh, many of you probably know and uh, actually a billionaire said it was his favorite book, something that he reads uh, every single day. And if you're ready to hear it, it might kind of throw you off, but it's uh, the tortoise and the hare. Now, before you click off this video, uh, stick with me. The principles hidden in this fable are easily transferable to what I see when it comes to uh, dental marketing. So just to refresh your memory, uh, the hare is the, the rabbit that challenges the tortoise to a race. Uh, the tortoise agrees, and obviously, uh, as soon as the gun goes off, as soon as they start the race, the hare takes off, goes much faster, much further than the tortoise, but the uh, tortoise is slow and steady. Eventually, what ends up happening is the rabbit gets distracted, he finds something to eat, he lays down and takes a nap for a little while, and allows the tortoise to catch up. Eventually, what happens is the tortoise overtakes the hare and ends up winning the race. Now the same story can be applied to the dental marketing industry in general. Uh, this is what I see among a lot of dentists. Uh, one resembles uh, the mentality of the tortoise, someone that's very methodical, it pays attention to uh, details, and wants to get ahead just by using something called the slight edge. The hair, on the other hand, resembles a majority of dentists that come into marketing that are very quick with some decisions and tend to not look at things in the, the long term. So for the sake of our analogy, let's say Bill has a tortoise mentality. He graduated a dental school and he's been working at a place for a little bit, but wants to now start his own practice. Let's say the hair is Jeff. He has been someone that has been um, really diligent in his studies as well, has the same amount of debt as Bill or yeah, Bill. <laughs> and uh, they're very similar starting out. Now the only difference is Bill has a mentality of a tortoise and Jeff has a mentality of the hare. Now with this mentality of the tortoise and the hare, Bill has the mentality of mastery. He's really after mastering the, the few key things that he needs to do in order to bring patients into his practice, where Jeff on the other hand is more of a dabbler. He's more trying different things out, and if it doesn't work, then he's not willing to uh, stick with it. Now, right now, I wanna make the distinction between dabbling and experimenting. Dabbling is not having the commitment to the long-term. Dabbling is kind of like uh, wishing or, or tossing a coin into a well and just hoping something happens with your practice, uh, putting some money into direct mail and just praying that it works. Whereas experimenting is having more of a commitment and an understanding of the big picture in general and being really committed to um, just trying different things out in order to find what works. So again, there's nothing wrong with experimenting, but there is an issue with dabbling. It's all about uh, the mindset and kind of this uh, lottery mentality, if you will. It's the kind of mindset that says, if you just, the only way for you to be successful is to kind of stumble into it or just kind of get uh, lucky. You just kind of, it's kind of like gambling. You just kind of throw your money here or there and you're just kind of hoping something will work. Whereas experimenting is you're more serious about the, the process and how you go about it and how uh, it inevitably will, will help you in the future. Someone that talks about the mastery mentality is Stephen James. Uh, he has a lot of good content on YouTube. He's uh, a self-help uh, coach, if you will. And if that's something you're into, I highly suggest checking out some of his stuff. Now, bringing it full circle back to Bill and Jeff, Bill has the mindset of the hare or the experimenter. He's willing to do things slowly, very methodically, give thought to his ways, 
and so that he can be successful in the long term. And then Jeff, on the other hand, has the hair mentality. He kind of goes about things as a dabbler, kind of the, the lottery approach, if you will, trying different things but not being very serious in their uh, success in the long term. This is what I see a lot with different dentists. Uh, some of them try Google ads or Facebook ads and have this approach or mentality of if it doesn't work once, then it doesn't work at all, where other dentists are willing to uh, experiment and really find out what works. Now, it doesn't matter if you do this yourself or through someone else, but I see so many dentists get burned by Facebook because you know they boosted a post and they didn't see anyone come in. Uh, that kind of approach and that mindset uh, will inhibit you from, from, growing, uh, from growing your practice. The reason being is if you just make that decision there, Facebook doesn't work at all, you're completely cutting off yourself from a potential a source of new patients. Whereas if you had a different mentality, maybe you wanted to run ads yourself, and instead of boosting a post, you did some more research and actually used ads manager or did something else on the back end to get different results, uh, then that's another story. But again, it's really up to you to decide if you want to be Bill or Jeff when it comes to growing your practice. So now that we have the mindset out of the way, let's take a look at some of the tactical approaches. I like to break this down into offense and defense. I played a lot of hockey growing up, so we're gonna use that as an analogy. Now, in order to be successful in growing your practice, you can't have one without the other. If you have defense, but you don't have any offense, you can't put the, the puck in the net and you can't uh, score any goals. Whereas if you just have offense and no defense, uh, we saw this with the Las Vegas Knights recently, how they, well, I mean, their goalie was okay. <laughs> But if you have offense and no defense, it's difficult for you to win games because you can't keep the puck out of your own net. So let's break down what offense and defense looks like when it comes to building your practice. I like to break defense down into three different parts. We have your website, we have SEO, and then we have your social media content. Having a solid website is the foundation for any practice. This enables you to have a face or a home online that people can come to or find information about and really decide if they wanna come in or not. If you don't have an engaging website, it's gonna be difficult for you to compete uh, with the people around you. SEO enables you to be visible on search engines like Google or Bing. I don't know who uses Bing, mostly Google, but this enables you to uh, become visible to people that are searching for a dentist in their area. And it also kind of keeps you accountable to having a lot of information on your website that's relevant to people uh, that are searching for you in the first place. And then social media content, this enables you to have a presence on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, this really is the touch point between uh, you and new patients. Uh, this is the kind of the, the front desk, if you will, of your online presence. So this is really important in demonstrating uh, kind of what you're like in the office, posting pictures about um, kind of day in the life material of what that looks like, but it's crucial to have all three in order to be successful on defense. So now that you've built up your defense, let's take a look at offense. I break down offense into three different parts. We have Google ads, Facebook ads, and then direct mail. Google ads is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, this allows you to rank number one out of all the organic results instantly uh, first day. This is really helpful for someone that's starting out that wants to kind of get their name out there and doesn't have a lot of the uh, years of, of SEO building and kind of the, the website reputation in order to rank above some of the, the top practices in your region. Facebook ads is important in finding people that fit your demographic uh, in your area. You can be really specific on uh, Facebook ads, and this is really where big data uh, comes into play. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is use uh, a client's existing patient list, make what's called a custom audience, and then uh, basically what you're telling Facebook is find people that are similar to uh, this, this list of people. So Facebook takes that, they look at the demographic, they look at the, the age, where they're located, what interests they have, and kind of makes an avatar for uh, what the next ideal patient is gonna look like. Uh, so that's really effective uh, for you to um, really get your name out there and grow your practice. And then direct mail is the cherry on top. Uh, this is useful if you are new to an area 
or maybe you just acquired a practice from someone else and you want them to you want the the people to know they have a change in ownership uh, this is useful in running different offers and kind of warming up the uh, area around you what I suggest everyone to do is to start with defense and then to move over to offense. Again, you can't win your dream practice. You can't be where you wanna be if you don't have both defense and offense. Now, if you wanna win in your region or in your state, you gotta remember there's no shortcuts. It's gonna take a discipline. It's going to take the small steps uh, every day that you do that some other dentist doesn't. So be committed to mastery and know that what you do today matters. Having a coach or a mentor in life is imperative for you to kind of see blind spots for them to point out some weaknesses that you need to work on or strengths that you need to embellish a little bit more. But without coaches or mentors, it's gonna be really challenging for you to, to win. It's important to keep yourself accountable even if you're a dentist, even if you're 40, some of the most successful people that I know all have multiple uh, accountability partners as well as mentors in their life. Thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to comment, leave any suggestions that you have for future videos. Uh, also feel free to uh, share the video if you got some value out of it and if you have some people in your life that need to see it. Consider subscribing and until next time, I'll see you later.